Welcome back to this ninth of video part nine, of which I'm making about ERP Next. And once again, it's strange to find this on a Trinity Drones channel. I'm just sharing my experience, and really, um, this effort of mine doesn't mean I'm a absolute boffin on the subject, but I just wanted to summarize or put all the information together that I found um, and it and it help, might help somebody else out there okay just on the screen before we get to oh what is the video about <laughs> um, what I would like to share with you is um, how to make your ERP Next site, which you can access from a browser with the, with the um, HTTP protocol, how to actually make it um, function using HTTPS. Right, so how do you do that? Before we get to the nitty gritty and the detail, let me just show you what my setup is. I've got a server hosted on a VPS host out there on the cloud somewhere. And my domain, which I use to access the site, is actually administered locally by a service provider, which of course is the domain administrator for that URL. This is by no means the only way you can do it. You can also have the same provider that's providing you with the uh, virtual private server hosting also to administer your domain. So this is by no means the only way and the correct way. This is just how I'm doing it. So if you type in the URL on your browser, it first accesses the A record on your name server. And of course it gets the IP address and from there on the traffic is directed at the website. Normal DNS uh, operation. All right. So this is my server. Obviously, we've got the operating system, we've got Jinx web interface, we've got the ERP application, of course, you've got some database, and all these have got open ports. Some of them you want to protect, some of the others not. So, in the case of the database, all access is from internally, so we can shut that port and we can make SSH more secure. Now, I'm not going to go through all the tricks that you can do to make this a little bit more secure, the firewalls and etc. If you want another video on this, you know, by all means, I'll try and do that. But for this one, I just want to focus on this. This is the engineering uh, access point. You know, you the back door, shall we call it that, where you have um, command line interface to your system where you do administrative tasks, etc., etc. All right, so this is this has got to be very well protected. Uh, you don't want anybody to be able to break into this port. This is the more public port, shall we say that, although um, you only want people in your company to use this. This is your browser, and of course, obviously, you will access the ERP Next software with a browser and do your accounting stuff, your uh, stock control, your production control, etc., etc. Now, on by default, the browser or the protocol that gets used is HTTP, and it actually hits the server on port, port 80. All right, but all that traffic is clear text, so anybody that eavesdropped on your eavesdrops is eavesdropping on your uh, um, traffic can actually see the passwords and transactions etc so you really want to uh, see if you can move over to a more secure encrypted commerce channel um, using HTTPS and of course hitting the server on port 443 so it really is um, about I really would like to share with you how you switch over from this to this Right now, with any encryption, similar to SSH, you need a key. All right. Now, the difference between SSH and the browser is the key setup is to such an extent that you can only access the server if you have a key. All right. Um, nobody else can access the system. The difference here is you want 
um, anybody to be able to access the system, given, of course, they've got the right passwords. Um, but you don't want to be found that that you have to load a key on your browser before you can actually access that. That means you've got to walk around loading keys on people's machines. So um, it's slightly different, but they both use keys and they encrypt um, the uh, the data. All right, so the trick here is to load um, an SSL um, certificate on you, which of course is used amongst others for the encryption. All right, so uh, this whole exercise is about how do you load a certificate, an SSL certificate on you, um, because not everybody can generate or make a certificate. Well, you can make your own, but uh, you often find that if you make your own, then browsers don't see that as a validated certificate uh, by a certified authority. Um, and some browsers might say, yet uh, this, this key doesn't look um, authentic. So warning, 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 red lights. So yes, you can generate your own. And in fact, I've seen documents that shows you how to do this. The, the way I'm doing it is to actually get a properly validated cert certificate from my own, the, the people that actually ad administrates my domain here, get it from them, load it on the server, and get going. All right, so basically the procedure is there are certain things you're going to do on the server, generate some stuff here, I'm just going to give you an overview now. We're going to generate certain things here. We're going to pass it back to our administrator. They are going to generate some stuff for us that we are going to put back on the server. And that certificate must be validated. And we'll talk more about that now. And then you can, um, then it will work. All right. So that's in broad strokes the uh, process that is involved. Right, before we get going, there's a few things that I'd just like to um, highlight. Uh, things that will come up um, within the commands that I'm going to show you with, with the next two or three slides. And if, so that I don't waste too much time during the slide explaining what it is. In some of the commands, you'll see a bracket like this that says domain. Now, I've taken my domains out, I've taken usernames out, I've got taken site names out, just for security purposes, honestly. Um, so I've replaced that with that. So let me just explain. Whenever it says domain, it's a fully qualified domain name. In other words, something like www.mysite.co.za or .nl, which is Holland, or and so you can carry on. Each country has got their own post fix there. So that's the fully qualified domain whenever you see the domain. And that is in fact the URL that you want to use to access your site. All right. The CSR certificate um, or CSR file is the certificate signing request. All right. That's what CSR stands for. ERP Next user. This is the user that you created when you installed ERP Next. Right at the beginning of the install process, if you followed the manual process like I did, it says create a user that will be used to install ERP Next. All right, so that is that user. And of course, the ERP, ERP Next site name during the install process as well, you are asked for a site name. What are you going to call the site? All right, and obviously there can be more than one site on a server as well. I've only got one site. So there we go. All right, as I said, um, there is a CSR file that needs to be generated um, on the server. This is on the server. Before we actually do that, we just need to make sure that the mul DNS multi-tenant uh, option is activated on the the ERP Next. Now, ERP Next uses bench frap, um, so these bench commands. You can go and Google this. Um, basically, you type in bench on your command line. Now, all of these commands are typed in on this 
back end, the engineering interface. All right, so it's the uh, Linux command line that you type all of these commands in. All right, you just say bench config DNS multi-tenant on, and of course you reload Jinx with its new configuration file. All right, but you have to do this. Um, the multi-tenant by default on ERP Next, from what I understand, is off. All right, so this is a bit of preparation that you need to do. Right, now we're going to create the CSR file. Um, now this you do on the server as well. You type in this command, it's an open SSL command with a couple of options. And there you type in your domain dot key. Um, you, uh, it's going to be outputting a key file and a CSR file. So this command has a result of a key file and a CSR file. Now this is the file that you will pass to your um, domain administration authority or any certified authority to actually um, generate the certificate for you and validate it for you. All right. And this key file you keep under lock and key, so to see, so to say. You don't want this slipping out in public domain. All right. So you type in this command and it yields those two files. All right. Next slide. Um, now you take it to your uh, domain administrator or any certified um, authority um, body and you ask for a CRT, a certificate file. All right, and they will, uh, obviously each company will have their own procedures. You'll have to find, it, find out from um, the particular company that you're approaching what their procedures are. Uh, certainly, they're, they're going to ask you for the CSR file at the very least. So you give them the CSR file, and they'll be they'll have a certain procedure with my um, administrator or domain hosting company. Um, I had to pay, of course, because now you you have to pay for this. Uh, you have to first pay a fee, and then there's a web interface where you fill in your name and a couple of things and supply the CSR file um, and they use that information to generate your CRT file. Okay, once you've got that, now you can, you need to go back to your server and save that somewhere. The place you save that is under etc and jinx conf d and you create this folder, it doesn't exist. All right. And you save that domain key and the CRT file. Remember, this is the file, one of the files that was a result of your um, command that you entered into the uh, Linux interface to generate the CSR file. So that file, together with the file that the uh, domain or certified authority supplies you with, you put in that folder. All right. Now, obviously, you can actually by hand go and conf change the config files for, in this case, in Jinx, or if you're not having, if you don't have an ERP Next server, you're using Apache, you know, the Apache config files, etc. You can do it by hand, but that's a bit tricky. There's a few parameters, and so the best would be to use the bench command to help you out with that. And uh, the, this is the command you enter, bench set SSL certificate. This is the ERP Next site name that you used when you installed ERP Next, like I explained previously. And this, of course, refers to that file that you just saved there, the certificate file that you received from the uh, CA company. And of course, same thing here, but now you refer to the key file, which were all saved in that folder. All right. Good. And once you've done that, it actually generates a new config file for Nginx. Now, of course, you just need to reload this new config file. Um, make sure that Nginx actually uses that, and you use the bench setup command uh, uh, like that and now you just need to restart the Nginx service all right depending on which type of Linux you are using you'll use one of these commands 
All right. And now in Jinx would see that uh, he's got a certificate and there's a couple of other changes that was made to the configuration file to make sure that you use port 443. <clears throat> and that should now be technically open. But there's one more step that needs to be done. And that's the validation of the certificate. Now, there's uh, more than one way for them, for the certificate to be validated. When you fill in your detail uh, during the process of requesting the certificate file, one of the things you supply is an email address. Now, that email address typically points towards the server. Admin at whatever the server or administrator or something like that. You have to have, it has to point towards that server because it needs to um, validate the certificate for that particular server. Now, in my case, I'm not running an email server on you, so there's another way that you can do that. And that is actually, if we go back to our previous diagram, they put a code in a text record on your, uh, in your name server records at your domain administrator. All right, that text record contains a code, it's gobbledygook. Um, so what happens is, with the first time that you access your site, only the first time, you type in your URL, it obviously goes to the um, authoritative uh, domain server for this particular domain. It takes that record, the A record, which contains the IP address, and of course this, and it accesses your site. And in the process, um, the server on your site then sees, ah, it's got that record and it validates the certificate. All right. Uh, afterwards, theoretically, you can just take that off. So now your certificate is validated. And you can now um, type in your URL. You'll notice that... Uh, um, it now doesn't show on the address bar of your browser HTTP, but it says HTTPS. Or in some browsers, it shows a little bit of a small little lock. And if you click on there, it says, um, you know, the site is secure. All right. So that's the process I followed. I just, once again, I thought I'd uh, just condense all the information into one. And hopefully find somebody finds this useful. Certainly hope that you guys did.